Hello everyone. In today's class, we discuss about Newton's first law of motion. Based on Galilean law of motion, Newton proposed a new law, and this law is known as Newton's first law of motion. According to him, every body continues to be at rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compared by an external force to change that state. Every body continues to be to be in its state of rest, in its state of in its state of rest or uniform motion uniform motion in a straight line or along a straight line along a straight line unless unless it is compared by an external force by an external force external force to change that state to change that state is it power important everybody continues to be in state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled by external force to change that state. So it has two parts. In first part, every body continues to be in a state of rest unless it is compelled by external force to change that state. For example, if a block is placed on the table, that means the block is at rest on the table. Here, only frictional force is acting because the block is contact with the table. Okay, here applied force is zero because it doesn't apply any external force. Every body, so if uh, if uh, the ball, block is at rest means external force is equal to zero. So if external force is equal to zero, the block does not move. That means it remains at state of rest. Okay. Uh, it remains at the state of rest till anybody push or pull it. That means till the uh, force, extra force is applied. Every body continues to be in state of rest unless it is compared by an external force to change that state. The ball block does not come to motion state unless uh, an external force is applied. Okay. Next, second part. Every body continues to be in its state of uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compared by an external force. For example, the same block, same block is moving on the straight uniform motion. It is moving, uh, some object is moving along a straight path, okay, over some surface. When the object moves on the straight path over the sun surface, it uh, moves continuously until some extra force is applied to stop the body. For example, if a ball rolls over the surface of friction, if the ball rolls over the frictionless surface, the ball keeps to move continuously until some extra force is applied to stop the ball. Okay, because when the object is moving, the frictional force is equal to applied force. When the object is moving, the frictional force is equal to applied force. Then the total force acting on the object is equal to zero. Here also F is equal to zero because here the frictional force are equal and opposite to the external force. If they are acting in opposite direction, the magnitude is same, then F minus F is equal to zero. Net force. Total force is equal to zero. 
therefore, in both the cases, external force is equal to zero. If external force is equal to zero, the body does not change its state of rest or change its state of uniform motion by itself. Only it gets changed if external force is applied. This is the Newton's special law of motion. Every body continues to be in state of rest or uniform motion in strike line unless, unless it is compared by an act or compared by external force to change that state. That means the body at rest continues to be at rest. If body in motion continues to be in the state of motion unless an external force is applied. Okay. Next momentum. This is about momentum. Momentum. It is simply denoted by small p. Momentum is denoted by small p. Momentum is the product of mass and velocity. What is momentum? It is the product of product of mass and velocity. It is the product of mass and velocity. Suppose a body of mass m, suppose a body of mass m moving with velocity v, then it has momentum. That momentum is given by p is equal to m into v because it is a product of mass and velocity. That is p is equal to mass is m and velocity p is v, m into v. This is the momentum. Momentum is the product of mass and Velocity. Okay. Here momentum is a vector quantity. Momentum is a vector quantity. It is a vector quantity. Because it has both magnitude and direction. It has both magnitude and direction. In vector form, this momentum is written as vector P is equal to M into vector V. In vector form, this can be written as vector P is equal to M into vector V. Okay. Here, M is the mass. It is a scalar quantity. Don't try to add for this because it is a scalar quantity. V is the velocity that is a vector quantity. Okay. For example, consider some object moving with the mass. Some object of mass 20 kg. For example, a body or an object of mass 20 kg is moves with a velocity so consider a body of mass 2 kg is moving with a velocity of 20 meter per second then what is its momentum that's momentum is a product of mass and velocity that is m into v m is 2 v is 20 so 2 into 20 that is 2 into 20 is 40 the si unit is for mass kg into velocity meter per second. So, SI yes, unit of momentum is kg meter per second. So, body of mass 2 kg moving with velocity 20 meter per second has a momentum of 40 kg. Or a body of mass 1 kg moving with a velocity of 10 meter per second, it has a momentum of 10 meter per second. 10 kg meter per second like that. Okay. So, SI yes, unit of momentum is kg meter per second. Okay. Next, this momentum depends both on mass and velocity. On which factor does the momentum depend? Momentum depends on mass and velocity. Momentum depends on mass and velocity. Mass and Velocity. Okay. For the first case, momentum is directly proportional to mass only if V is constant. If velocity is constant. Okay. P is directly proportional to M if V is constant. That means momentum is directly proportional to mass if velocity remains constant. If we consider a body is consider two bodies of different masses, M1 and M2. Okay. 
They are moving with same velocity. That is common velocity. We, both the objects are moving with the same velocity. If you consider two toy cars like that, they have same. They are moving with the same velocity. Two car, toy cars, toy cars, uh, toy cars are moving with the same velocity. That is v. But the ma the mass is different. One is a uh, young one, another is young one. Okay. So if the cars are move, uh, the toy cars are moving with the same velocity. If young one is greater than young two, if young one is greater than young two. If you want to stop the cars, if you want to stop the cars, then force is required to stop the cars. Okay. So this uh, heavier mass require heavier force to stop the cars, and lower smaller mass require smaller force to stop the car. Okay. So both are moving with the same velocity, but mass are different. The object has heavier mass. The object has heavier mass that is m one required heavier large force to stop the required large force to stop. But the car of mass m two that is smaller mass required only small force. Therefore, here in this case momentum is greater compared to this as mass increases. Momentum also increases as mass. We know the directly and inversely proportional. As mass increases, momentum also decreases. As mass decreases, momentum also decreases. Here do same velocity are moving there, but when do heavier mass is under lighter mass. Heavier mass is under stop part of the boundary. Now that large force is applied part of the boundary. Smaller mass. सेम वेलासिटी मूव आगे स्वल्प फोर्स अल्लाई मेरे ऐन अब क्रस्ट बे ओके सो पी इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू एफ एस फोर्स अंड आलो फोर्स इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू चेंज इन मोमेंट देर फोर पी इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू एम एस मास इंक्रीज मोमेंट आलो इंक्रीज एस मास इंक्रीज मोमेंट आलो डिक्रीज इफ वी इज कॉन्स्टेंट वेलासिटी इज कॉन्स्टेंट इन द सेकेंड केस पी इज डायरेक्टली प्रपोर्शनल टू बी मोमेंटम इज जनरली प्रोपोर्शनल टू वेलोसिटी एट कांस्टेंट मास इफ m इज कांस्टेंट और कांस्टेंट मास अगेन वी कंसीडर टू टॉय कार्स हैविंग सेम मास कंसीडर टू टॉय टॉय कार्स ऑफ हैविंग मास सेम मास दैट मींस m एंड m और m इज इक्वल टू m टू देयर हैविंग सेम मास बट दे आर मूविंग विद डिफरेंट वेलोसिटी First toy car moves with faster velocity, and second toy car, toy car moves with lesser velocity. Okay, so if you want to stop the toy cars, then we apply greater force for the car moving with larger velocity, and we apply the smaller force to car move, to stop the car moving with the lesser velocity. That means has. Moment as velocity increases, force also increases. As force increases, change in momentum also increases. That means as velocity increases, momentum also increases. As velocity decreases, momentum also decreases. Only if mass is constant. Okay, this is all about momentum. Next, Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts okay newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of a body momentum of a body is directly proportional to the directly proportional to the to the applied force applied force and takes place and takes place the direction in which The direction in which the force acts. Direction in which the force acts. The force acts. 
Newton's formula states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts. Okay, we know that the momentum is directly proportional to mass at constant velocity. Directly proportional to mass at constant velocity. Here, mass is directly proportional to force. As momentum is directly proportional to mass at constant velocity, at constant velocity. so if we have to be directly proportional to m, f is also directly proportional to m because the heavier force is required to uh, stop the heavier object and smaller force is required to stop the smaller object. That is, f is directly proportional to p. As p is directly proportional to m, f is directly proportional to m, and change in momentum as a result of this change in momentum is directly proportional to f that means if the two bodies have momentum uh, the body have final momentum p2 and initial momentum p1 that means the body sometimes moves with an initial velocity some initial velocity that has some initial momentum that is p1 after applying some external force the momentum of the body will change that called as final momentum that is p2 so change in momentum is nothing but p2 minus p1 that means initial momentum final momentum minus initial momentum change in momentum change in momentum is nothing but final momentum minus initial momentum final momentum minus initial momentum okay final momentum minus initial momentum so this momentum is denoted by usually momentum is denoted by p changes any changes in physical quantity is denoted by d so change in momentum is denoted by dp for example change in displacement displacement can be denoted by x change in displacement can be denoted by delta x okay velocity is v small change in velocity can be denoted by delta v like that momentum is p so change in momentum can be written as dp so dp is equal to that is change in momentum is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum this is the final momentum of the body that is p of minus initial momentum that is pi it can be written as p2 minus p1 or p of minus p i p change final momentum minus initial momentum this is equal to change in momentum so according to the newton second law of motion the rate of change of momentum of a body suppose a body of certain mass moving with a velocity certain velocity it has certain initial momentum if i apply an external force the velocity of the body will change then its momentum will change so that change with a certain interval of time is directly proportional to the applied force that is rate of change of momentum that is time of change of momentum that is dp by dt dp by dt dp by dt is nothing but rate of change of momentum is written as rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the applied force that is capital f and takes place the direction in which the force acts the momentum will change only along the direction in which the force is applied so force arrow direction apply maartiro and that means act maartiro adhe direction momentum kuda enagutirutte change aagutirutte so rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to applied force okay f is directly proportional to dt by dt dt by dt is directly proportional to f or f is directly proportional to dt by dt to remove this proportional design we put a constant that is f is equal to k into dt by dt so proportional design we put one value there equals to one value proportional design constant all the proportional design we put one remove one value there equals to one value so then we put one constant that constant is known as proportional design where k is the proportionality constant and k is the proportionality constant okay so this is newton's law of motion the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts
assignment of form is written as vector f is equal to k into dp by dp. 